Have you started? Okay. Systems thinking in our work at Biodiversity. Um, I've become f fascinated by systems approaches and I believe that they can help us in our work and the way that we do our work. But a warning before I start, systems approaches are full of diagrams with tiny little writing, so please don't <laughs> attempt to read them during the presentation. I can share them later. This is the Hydra, a mythical beast slain by Hercules in the second of his 12 labours. Every time you cut off one head, two more grow back, and fighting it gets ever more difficult and dangerous. This is similar to a phenomenon when you work with human beings. There's a problem for every solution. <laughs> One reason why there's a problem for every solution is because everything is linked and interdependent. This slide represents the web of life and gives an idea of the complex nature of our interconnected world. But you're all looking at it and thinking, web of life, there's no biodiversity here. <laughs> Which just goes to show how even when you think you've swept in every conceivable aspect of a problem, you can never be quite sure you haven't left something out. Each partial viewpoint eliminates important information. By the by, the researcher in this case has an idea of the farmer as a man and the woman as the farmer's wife, not a farmer herself. <laughs> so, situations are interconnected, all dynamically moving and affecting each other. Events and activities today can have effects which are out of proportion with the stimulus and distant in time and geography, like the flap of the wing of a butterfly in Rome, which causes a typhoon in Brazil. This causes great uncertainty. The most we can do with this kind of problematic, messy situation is not solve it, but nudge it along to a better place. We can change our practices, which moves our understanding along, and we can change our understanding, which moves our practices along like the gender workshops that Maria Fernandez has been conducting. They've moved our understanding along, so we realise we need some new practices. But who decides what improved and better looks like? I like my books in alphabetical order on the shelf, because I'm logical. My husband likes them in height order because he's tidy. My kids may strew them all over the shelf, but at least they're on the shelf. We can all agree that strewn across the floor is not the right place. But where they end up often depends on the loudest voice and who is boss in the family. <laughs> Slide eight, and I've not yet defined my working definition of a system, so here it is. A group of elements perceived by someone as interacting for a purpose. <laughs> what are now called systems approaches come from all different traditions in biology, economic, economics, maths, and so on. You may well be familiar with some of these approaches already. The ones I know best personally are learning systems, critical systems, and systems failure. And here are some key concepts associated with systems thinking. It all seems rather complicated. Luckily, there are some tools which can help us understand better the interlinkages and the different perspectives and uncertainty. One of these is a rich picture. Here is one. I drew, when Laura described the situation in the Nyasa Reserve, the fit of genetic diversity of the trees with the threats and opportunities for managing the reserve better. Two important things here. This is not an art competition. And secondly, it's only one point of view. Putting it in a picture allows people to share their viewpoints. Another tool is an influence diagram. Here's one for the same situation in Nyasa. The Austrian donor actually asked us to outline the interdependencies in our project proposal. When things are not linear, a diagram works better than a long stream of text. So far, it all seems rather analytical. There are systems, and we can spot them, describe them, and improve them. But it's more complicated than that. One systems thinker asked, Am I apart from the universe, looking through a peephole upon an unfolding universe? Or am I part of the universe? That is, whenever I act, I'm changing myself and the universe as well. This is one of those areas that causes systems thinkers from different traditions to engage in deep debate. In one case, we see the world is made up of systems. Our job is to understand and improve them. In the other case, we see situations that intrigue us and we use the concept of a system to engage with them and improve them. But by doing that, we become part of the system and that has implications. So much for the systems we can see in our projects. But systems thinking is also useful for managing our projects. We can view our projects as systems. 
One way we can do this is to think about the transformations we would like to see. For example, in the Capacity Development Unit, they're linking up all the Fellowship alumni to each other. Fellows unlinked gets transformed into Fellows linked up. Once we agree on the transformation we want to see, another small tool called PQR, or How, What, Why, can help us to see if we're all working towards the same goal. So, linking fellows up is what we want to do, but why and how? There's a difference between linking fellows up by sending them useful information in order to keep them engaged with biodiversity and linking fellows up by creating discussion spaces in order to create networks of innovation. It has implications for the structure and what you do. Try it on your unit, your project, biodiversity's mission, once you have an AT and a PQR, it's useful to work out the steps to get there. I said steps, and in fact we usually picture this as a pathway, an impact pathway, going in one direction with one event following another. An alternative and complementary way is to see them like a system. We can see them as a system of interacting activities with the emergent property of the change we want to see. This is one I put together with Adam to express the activities in the on-farm theme we can check we're delivering what we expected with the three E's, effectiveness, efficiency, efficacy, or as I prefer, five E's, adding also elegance and ethics. <laughs> Speaking of ethics, now the CGIR is outcome focused, we're explicitly in intervening in people's lives. Here's a useful tool to make sure no one gets hurt. It's basically a set of powerful questions that help com compare the stakes held by different stakeholder groups, including people who may not be involved in our research, but are affected by it. Finally, I invite you to visit my blog where I explore these things. I would be more than happy to explore all these ideas with anyone who's interested. <laughs>